my fellow Doverkeen, and welcome to 10 more great mods for Skyrim on PlayStation 4. This is a part 2, as I have already made a top 10 mods for Skyrim on PlayStation 4 video, which if you haven't watched yet, you should watch that first before watching this video. I'll leave a link to it in the description, or you can click the I button in the top right hand corner. There are so many great mods on PlayStation 4 that I missed in that first video, so I thought I should make a part 2. Now let's get started with number 10. At number 10 we have Quick Start, Skip New Game Intro Scenes. By now most people that are still playing Skyrim will have memorised the introduction scenes of riding the prisoner carriage into Helgen word for word, and whenever someone asks you where you're from in real life, you have to resist the urge to say Rorikstead. I'm... I'm from Rorikstead. With this mod you don't have to sit through that intro scene ever again, you'll start at the race menu, create your character as normal, then you'll be prompted to decide whether you want to start at the keep with Rayloff or Hadvar, once you've then made your choice you'll be teleported to the appropriate place in the keep and from there you can proceed normally. A great mod for those who create new characters on a regular basis. Next up we have race menu anytime. PC users will be laughing at this mod because all they have to do to bring up the race menu is type in a simple console command. However, because it's not possible to enter console commands on PS4, we need a mod to make up for it. In Farangar's office in Dragon's Reach, there sits a strong box on a bookshelf above two goblets. Inside are 50 gems of destiny. Simply drop one of these gems and you will have the choice to remake yourself, choosing a different race, sex, body type, facial attributes, hair, tattoos, and even a new name. After a gem is dropped and performs its purpose, that gem then vanishes forever. You can use the race menu as many times as you like, provided you have a gem left to drop. This allows you to try out another race and not be stuck with it for the entire game. This means that you can do some of the miscellaneous quests that are only available to specific races. Did you pick a name or even a sex that you later came to regret? The race menu allows you to change these things, whereas the face sculptor and Riften from Vanilla Skyrim can only change your appearance, not your race, name or sex. At number 8 we have better horses. Let's face it, the vanilla horses in Skyrim suck. They're slow as hell, they run out of stamina way too quickly, and they get in the way in combat and get killed by one sabre cat, meaning you constantly have to buy new horses unless you have Shadowmere or Arvac. Better horses gives horses more stamina so they can run for longer without tiring, like real horses. They are quicker, making them more useful when travelling. It renders them essential, preventing their untimely death and saving your precious septums. And lastly, they will now flee from combat and will never engage, staying out of the way whilst you fight the scum of Skyrim. Next up we have Hobbiton by Ozymandy. This mod adds a new player home to Skyrim located north of Falkreath and not far from Riverwood. As its name would suggest, this mod is a recreation of Bilbo Baggins' house from the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit movies. Lord of the Rings and Skyrim are of course both in the fantasy genre, therefore the Hobbit house fits in really well into Skyrim and honestly doesn't look too out of place. It's surprising how well this actually fits in, it doesn't feel unimmersive at all. The outside of the house looks wonderful as it is situated in a nice area next to a large lake. Even though there are some slight graphical bugs in and around the area of the house which is annoying but hopefully it will be fixed in a future update. The interior also looks great and features everything you would expect from a player home including a bed, crafting stations, cooking pot, mannequins, weapon racks and plenty of storage but of course it's all made to look like Bilbo's house was transported into Skyrim and the mod author has done a fantastic job of making it feel like a Hobbit house from Lord of the Rings without making it feel like it doesn't belong. If you're a fan of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, this could be the player home for you. At number 6 we have another player home, Deus Mons, the Castle of Mirak. This mod adds a giant castle slash stronghold situated just south of the throat of the world. The idea behind the stronghold is that Mirak, the first dragonborn, built the castle himself. The description of the mod says, the legend says that a dragon rider would have built it to make it his home, a castle difficult to access by road, until the day when this son of dragons disappears somewhere in the island of Solstheim, leaving eternal snows on the throat of the world to cover it. To gain access to the castle, you will need to defeat the castle's guardian and loot the key from his corpse. The features of this mod include a large castle worthy of a high king, 
all craft stations, everything to expose your trophies, a vault room, a trophy room, showcases, numerous mannequins, a majestic throne room with a dragon museum, portals of teleportation to Winterhold and Whiterun, and you can even find 5 relics of Mirak that will make your shouts more powerful. This is a huge player home that's easy to get lost in, but it looks awesome and the story behind it is believable. If you want your dragonborn to live in a home worthy of their power, this may be the player home for you. Next up at number 5 is Increased Population. This mod adds over a thousand new NPCs to Skyrim in about every corner, ranging from basic models to overpowered followers, to make Skyrim feel full of life, making the world feel more active and alive. The AI of vanilla Skyrim NPCs has not been changed, for the exception of a handful. Skyrim was not populated enough so this mod changes that. Every single NPC is lore friendly. The mod also adds multiple bug fixes and improvements and there are even a few easter eggs thrown in. This was originally a personal mod that the mod authors decided to release publicly and I'm very glad that they did. At number 4 we have more bandit camps by Skillist. Ever wandering through Skyrim and miss how many bandit camps there were in Oblivion or Morrowind? This mod changes that. Now there are several more bandit camps, highwaymen, and stories to go along with them. This mod adds 30 plus bandit campsites to the world of Skyrim, most with their own stories, new unique bandit NPCs, and various highwaymen locations. The rugged world of Skyrim will seem more dangerous and exciting with these new additions. The campsites range from big fort styled camps with stockade, walls and towers, to small detailed campsites with interesting loots and stories. This mod just makes exploring that little bit more interesting and builds up the world a little bit more, making it feel more full. Next up we have Alidon's Ultimate Armory. This is very similar to the cheat room mod for Fallout 4, but it's not just a cheat room. It's also a custom armory with tons of unique items, spells, followers and much more. The main thing that really surprised me about this mod was how different the mod author managed to make everything look. I honestly don't understand how on earth they managed to achieve all of this without using any custom assets. Some of the weapons you can find in this armory look really unique and different to anything I've seen in vanilla Skyrim, and some of the followers look absolutely mental, like the Hermaeus Mora reincarnation. The features of this mod include two new player homes, teleports to guilds, dungeons, player homes and more, over a hundred never seen custom and unique followers of almost every race, over a hundred completely new spells, 80 new weapons, 50 new armors and 10 new arrows, all with unique enchantments and effects, modification rings to modify your player's stats, speed and visual effects, cheat room with cheat items, tons of gold and cheat followers, armory rooms containing all standard spells, powers, armors and weapons, a leveling room to boost player level and get dragon souls, two merchants who sell unplayable items, artifacts and quest items, and other special things. There are merchants everywhere who sell special items and leveled items from other mods that you have downloaded, meaning no more searching everywhere for merchants. There's an all enchantments box for learning all enchantments, plus unenchanted artifacts to add custom enchantments to, all standing stones, plenty of weapons and armor for you and your followers, a crafting room with probably everything you could ever need and a merchant, a battle hall with strange enemies and fights if you want to test out your new items, side things to unlock within the armory if you get bored, and many other unique things things only found in this mod. This is a humongous mod that will take you a few hours just to explore the entire armory. Even if you don't want to use it for cheating, it's worth downloading just to have a look around. At number 2 is Fenderic's Magic Evolved. Fenderix Magic Evolved is the largest and most comprehensive spell mod available for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Currently, it adds approximately 400 new spells to the game. This is a massive sandbox collection of balanced spells. The mod allows you to decimate foes or aid allies, buy spells from vendors throughout Skyrim, utilize new elemental archetypes to create interesting spell combinations and enjoy new role-playing options, summon nearly every creature found in Skyrim, become mightier than any warrior through the usage of enhanced speed and weapon speed spells. Some spells can be used like powers, allowing a dual wielder to still utilize magic. You can cast defensive spells to protect or heal allies, obliterate enemies, turn them into chickens, or pull them through space and time. The spells in this mod are added to leveled lists for spell tomes. This means that you will be able 
able to buy the spell tomes from various vendors throughout the game. This process is very organic and similar to how you would normally obtain spell tomes in vanilla Skyrim. If you wish to cheat and obtain all of the spells, you can find the cheat chest next to Farangar in Whiterun's Dragon's Reach. This is a fantastic mod that makes being a mage so much more interesting and varied. Spice up your next mage playthrough with this mod. Last, but quite the opposite of least, we have the final mod, Forgotten Dungeons. This mod adds 49 new dungeons that are Radiant Quest enabled. This means that the next time you accept a Radiant Quest, it might send you to one of the new dungeons added by this mod. It also adds 11 extra dungeons that are not Radiant Quest enabled. If you didn't already know, a Radiant Quest is a quest that has no specific location. Instead, the game will choose a random dungeon to send you to. This is often used for fetch quests where you have to go to a dungeon, clear it out and loot the quest item from the end of dungeon chest. Some can be repeated infinitely, granting the rewards each time you complete them while sending you to a different location. This mod adds a ridiculous amount of new content and stories for you to enjoy across all of Skyrim. The dungeons are well made and fun to fight through, adding hours of great new content to freshen up your Skyrim experience. There is absolutely no reason why you wouldn't download this mod. Now that will take us to the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it or found it helpful in some way. If you did, please leave a like, click subscribe and hit the notifications bell button to see more videos like this in the future. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers so any help in getting there is much appreciated. I'll see you in the next video. May Talos guide you.